blacker than me. <coughs> I wasn't born in Africa. All right. If you were born on a ship, what would you be? <laughs> I don't know nothing about Africa, of course. When you're born, you don't know nothing about nothing. It's only when you learn something about something that you learn something. You know about America. <laughs> you didn't born learning about America. <laughs> you don't know Africa because they don't teach you anything about Africa. Yes, of course not. But it's your responsibility to learn about Africa. We do not just want to clap when we show clearly and expose the nature of the problem. We want more enthusiastic clap for the solution because that's how the problem will be solved. <laughs> yes. hey, if the university doesn't teach you anything about Africa and you don't know anything about Africa, it's your fault. Double time's your fault. You're stupid in the first place for thinking they're going to teach you about it and double foolish in the second place for not doing something about it. <laughs> confusion has the African and America so confused that they don't even know where they are, who they are, or where their home is. Tragedy indeed. If one has no history, if one has no history, one can have no understanding, no tools on which to analyze the present, let alone map out the future. This is clear, crystal clear. In order for a man, a woman, to know precisely where they're going, they must have some understanding of that which came before them. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. For example, what is the name of the main street in Athens? What is the name of the main street here? Broad Street. Let's say I live at 485 Broad Street. It's very simple, you know. I get up in the morning about 8 o'clock. I go to my job. By 12 o'clock, I forgot where I came from. When job is over, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you see, it's very simple. You must know where you come from in order to know where you're going. You understand it? Yes. And if we don't know we came from Africa, we really don't know where we're going. It's really very simple. Before we can speak, before we can come to look and solve the problems of our people, we must, number one, understand history. We say it. It's the truth. The beautiful thing about the truth is that even if you're against the truth, you got to get up publicly and admit the truth. For example, any one of you who cheat, raise your hands, then get up and defend cheating. <laughs> you see the truth? The truth. The might, almighty truth. The truth. Yes. You must learn your history. Your history will not be given to you by the university professor. Can you not, as a group of students, organize yourself, sit down, discipline yourself, and study your history? Why not? Why not? Simply because the capitalist system makes you irresponsible? Why not? Simply because the capitalist system has rendered you useless to your people? And if it has rendered you useless to your people, and your people are engaged in struggle, you are against your people. At best, you're making the people carry dead weight, and they got enough weight to carry. You must study your history. You must be responsible. You are students, and you don't even read. How stupid. I tell you, anything you get your hands on, read. I tell you, read, 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 read. Instead of boogalooing so much, read. Instead of playing biz with so much, read. You might learn something. And the more you know, the better able you are to serve humanity. You must read. We say we must organize the people. We come to get those Africans who are conscious. But we have a responsibility to all people. Revolution, based on truth, is universal. If it benefits one sector of humanity, it benefits all sectors of humanity. Thus, we say the Africans must organize. But we say that the white poor must organize even more than the Africans because the white poor is exploited and is not even conscious of their exploitation. It's a vicious system. It is a vicious system. Thus, the white student sitting here has really a responsibility upon his or her back if, in fact, they are conscious human beings. The challenge, of course, is a great challenge, but life without a challenge wouldn't be life. My father used to tell me, son, the heart of the battle, the sweet of the victory. I don't want any easy task in life. That doesn't benefit anything. I want to be tested to the limit of my capacities. And if it's for the benefit of humanity, test me. <laughs> Test me. Test me. The African student who's conscious, 
The African student who will not allow capitalism to make him irresponsible, who fights all the time to be responsible, to fulfill his responsibility to humanity. This student is all the time conscious, studying, looking at, discussing the problems that his people faces. The conscious student. The conscious student. The conscious student. The one who recognizes that he must be free. The one who recognizes that his, his, his body is just an instrument for the service of his people. This student will all the time be looking to see how to solve the problem. This student who has been doing this knows that there's one solution to the problem we face, and that is Pan-Africanism, the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. That is to say, and we must properly understand it. Of course, we have confusion everywhere. There are some who will come to tell you that in order for us to be free, we must first free ourselves here. And then after we free ourselves here, we can this stupidity. Clear stupidity, a historical perspective. The man or the woman who advocates this problem knows nothing of history. The man or woman who understands this, who, who gives the solution, knows nothing of dialectics. They don't even know of the interrelationship of all forces on the earth. As a matter of fact, they just see America, nothing but America. And worse than that, they see the world the way America wants them to see the world. It can be lightly said. It can be lightly said. We don't want to be accused of being called racist. It can be lightly said that the wealth and labor of Africa built America and Europe and keeps it sustained to this day. It can be lightly said. Any intelligent man, not even a conscious one now, an intelligent man can simply see that since this wealth and labor is what keeps this up, until this wealth and labor is used for this, this will never go anywhere. That is to say, until Africa is free, we can never be free. Until your home is free, you can never be free. Our problem is we don't know where home is, of course. We must understand when we come to struggle what we're struggling. We're struggling against the capitalist system. It's powerful. It's a powerful system. It operates on scientific laws. It knows no sentimentality. It pursues its objective with a stubbornness that will not shake, only be shaken by the will and the determination of the masses of the people. Let me show you what capitalism will do to you, how serious it is, because we may take it as a plaything. You are a child, 13 or 14 years old. 11 years old, even 10, 9. Your mother sends you to be entertained, that is to say, to enjoy yourself on a Saturday afternoon to go to the movies. Let it be understood. When one comes to enjoy oneself, when one comes to be entertained, one is at one's most relaxed position. It is in this relaxed position that propaganda can be easily pumped into the minds of the people. You see, it's all scientific. You just go and read even some of their, their bare laws on psychology, you will see it. You come to the movies, you're a child. You sit down, you say your money, you come, you eat popcorn, and while you're sitting there, they're pushing Tarzan into you, just pushing it. You walk out of the movies, you love Tarzan, you hate yourself, and you come back next week paying some more money to be entertained.